Oke, okay. assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And a very good day to everyone. Alright, so basically this is the uh, chapter six, so part two. So this is the last uh, topics on chapter six. Uh, so basically we have two parts, part one and part two. So this part will discuss on rankan cycle especially on steam power plant okay so basically part one has been uh, discussed before this so you can uh, you can refer back to uh, my last video on thermal power plant part one okay so basically today we proceed on the uh, rankan cycle steam power plant part two okay So steam power plant. So steam power plant. Okay, also known as thermal power thermal power station, is a power plant in which the prime mover is steam driven. Okay, so basically steam power plant as as same as it names. So it use uh, steam water. Water is preheat into a steam. Okay. So basically, water is heated, turn into steam, and it spin a steam turbine, which derive an electrical generator. Okay. So basically, that generator will produce electric power, lah. Okay. So a thermal power station is a power plant in which heat energy is converted into electrical power. Okay. So basically, the generator will produce electrical power, lah. Okay, so this is the figure. So basically, as an idea, okay. So a boiler, a boiler is consists of water, water inside here, and we have a furnace to preheat the water inside the boiler until the water produce a steam, okay, converted into a steam, and the steam will be transmitted to steam turbine. Whereby steam turbine will be coupling with electrical generator that produce electricity. Okay, and then the turbine exhaust, which is the st uh, steam, will go back into the boiler. To uh, uh, which is the process will be recycled again. Okay, so basically, uh, in the right side, so we have a example of power plant. Which is in Klang, okay. So it's known as Connaught Bridge Power Station, right? So the basic idea for steam power plant is come from the Carnot cycle. So Carnot cycle is the ideal. So basically the ideology, okay. So basically the Carnot cycle cannot be be used in the reality. But the idea behind the Carnot cycle is being used and be modified into the steam power plant. Okay, so before we further discuss about steam power plant, we must know what is the basic inside Carnot cycle. Okay, so basically as we have discussed before this, the Carnot cycle. Okay, so basically Carnot cycle is a heat engine. Okay, so basically the component inside the Carnot cycle consists of the boiler, a turbine, a condenser, and also a pump to recycle the water back inside the boiler. Okay, so the process involved for each of the component for process one two is the isothermal heat addition in a boiler. So. Okay, so for process two and three, uh, okay, so this is the uh, we have some 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 ni. Okay, so isothermal heat addition in the boiler is process two and three. Okay, we have some error here. Okay, so isothermal heat addition is process two three. Isothermal expansion in the turbine is a process three and four. Okay, and process four to one is a isothermal heat rejection. So this is a condition and heat being rejected, which but which mean that the temperature inside the 
uh, steam or the water will reduce and steam will uh, turn back into water and lastly uh, one to two is a isotomic compression in a compressor it's not a compressor it's a pump actually okay so this is the uh, basic Carnot cycle so the efficiency of the Carnot cycle is work net divided by Q in so this is your heat in injected inside the boiler so this is the work net so work net is come from work turbine minus work uh, pump work turbine minus work pump or or uh, Q in minus Q out okay so we have this equation lah. okay so that is this is the uh, efficiency of the Carnot if you uh, confuse you can refer back to the chapter 4 chapter something chapter 4 discussing on the Carnot cycle basic Carnot cycle okay all right so this is the basic Carnot cycle okay so Carnot cycle is the most efficient cycle operating between the two specific temperature limit but it is not suitable model for power cycle because so process one two okay limiting the heat transfer process to two phase system okay so basically several limits the maximum temperature that can be used in a cycle okay so basically this is the temperature limit so this is your uh, temperature temperature axis y axis okay so this is the limit which is that uh, inside the mixture condition so basically uh, the temperature cannot be increasing okay so process 2 and 3 the turbine cannot handle steam at moisture content because turbine normally turbine has uh, many blades okay so moisture will increase tear and wear for rotor blade because rot the rotor blade is very small uh, the introduction of water droplet will increase wear and tear of the rotor blade okay because of erosion and also wear okay so process four to one okay it's not practical to design a pump that handle two phase okay so pump normally operate only at a single phase normally is at a uh, liquid phase okay so pump cannot handle two phase which is uh, for example uh, liquid and uh, uh, gas so it cannot so it's only on liquid only for gas purposes we use a uh, compressor or blower something like that to transfer gas okay so this is the Carnot cycle the, the 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 problem with Carnot cycle the idea is there but it cannot be uh, produced into the realistic so that's why the Carnot cycle is being modified we call it as a Rankine cycle so Rankine cycle is come from Carnot cycle the idea from Carnot cycle is being improvised into Rankine cycle so Rankine cycle or also known as the ideal cycle for vapor power cycle so many of the impracticalities associated with the Carnot cycle can be eliminated by superheating the steam in the boiler and condensing it completely in the condenser so the cycle that results in Rankine cycle which is the ideal cycle for vapor power cycle okay so basically if you see here in turbine okay so basically uh, the turbine operate uh, uh, majority in a steam condition so at the outlet maybe some uh, water droplet in being introduced which is in a uh, leak, uh, mixture condition so in majority so in majority the steam are in uh, uh, 
superheated condition okay so in because if you see here the turbine consists of many blades so this is the the, the small one is the blade <coughs> so the blade is very small and very precise so basically uh, wear and tear for uh, the blade will reduce the efficiency of the turbine okay so number two is that the pump so the pump must be taken outside from the mixture condition okay so basically here is in the liquid condition okay so these two uh, important things that makes the Rankine cycle being used uh, for uh, reality uh, condition okay but this is the basic foundation for Rankine cycle lah. okay so the process is similar with uh, current cycle which is we have the isentropic compression in a pump pump we have a pump okay two and three is a boiler constant heat addition so three and four is the expansion in a turbine and lastly four to one is a uh, constant heat reje heat rejection constant pressure heat rejection in a condenser okay so exergy analysis energy analysis sorry energy analysis of the ideal Rankine cycle For, firstly we consider a pump so basically in a pump uh, we can uh, acknowledge the process inside the pump by two formula firstly is by using the enthalpy secondly is by the pressure because here the volume is constant pump will operate in a constant volume but the outlet the pressure outlet is much higher compared to the uh, inlet pressure so that is the use, usage of a pump okay so we have two formula normally we have two types formula okay so uh, process two and three is a heat addition inside the boiler so inside the boiler we have a combustion chamber normally we assume this combustion chamber is a heat addition so inside this here is based on the combustion condition itself this is the efficiency of the combustion okay we have a um, mass flow fuel this is the calorific value of the fuel and also efficiency of the boiler and also the boiler itself so this is the uh, heat addition to the boiler so this come from the efficiency of the boiler so heat is come from the uh, combustion condition so heat is also uh, using this formula mass flow rate this is mass flow rate of a steam okay so this is the enthalpy h3 minus h enthalpy 3 minus enthalpy 2 okay so uh, if you want to uh, el uh, elaborate more so you can have a this uh, heat addition is same with uh, this formula lah. okay so bear in mind in boiler normally we assume that the heat addition only okay normally in this level normally the combustion condition normally uh, we taken out but if in the question uh, ask about uh, the boiler uh, sorry the combustion efficiency so this is the uh, formula for combustion okay right so process 3 4 is a isentropic ex expansion in a turbine so this is a normal expansion normally in the turbine we have uh, one inlet one outlet but in an advanced turbine we have al uh, also have a two outlet okay uh, the another outlet will be reheated and another outlet will be uh, going into the mix mixing chamber so for this uh, for this level uh, we have only uh, one inlet and one outlet okay so uh, so this is isentropic expansion in turbine and lastly is a constant pressure heat rejection in a condenser so condenser normally 
uh, we call it as a condition but uh, its function is same with the heat exchanger okay so basically we have two fluids okay uh, heat being exchanged between the two fluid normally either is based on the water to exchange to uh, reduce the the, 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 the the temperature for the steam or also we have uh, by using air so this uh, device uh, for for Rankine cycle we call it as a condenser and it acts same with heat exchanger okay so we have two uh, here uh, we have two uh, liquid so firstly is a water to reduce the temperature for the steam steam also is a water and water also uh, so this is the the, the water is, is not mixed with the steam so the water here is used to reduce the temperature of the steam okay so the total uh can see for this device for sorry for either rank and cycle is work net divided by q in heat in injected so the work net is come from the uh, turbine minus the pump this is a pump okay so this is your uh, heat injected inside the boiler okay all right so sample problem 6.5 so consider a steam power plant operating on the simple ideal Rankine cycle steam enter the turbine at 3 megapascal and 350 degree celsius and is condensed in the condenser at a pressure of 75 kilopascal so determine the thermal efficiency of this cycle okay so this is the basic ideal Rankine cycle and given directly in the question is that uh, the no uh, the, 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 the the information given is at the turbine so at point three so this is the uh, this is your pressure line we have two pressure line so the pre higher pressure line is 3 megapascal and the lower pressure line is 75 kilopascal okay so basically the, the information is given uh, at point 3 okay so at point 3 is uh, turbine inlet and at turbine is the isentropic process so which mean that the isentropy okay entropy for point three and point four is the same. Okay, all right. So, solution for sample problem six four five. Okay, so this is the TS diagram. Okay, so the process starting with normally starting with a pump. Pump we consider is a is a, is a assumption we consider starting at point one is from the pump. Okay, so point one to point two the pump function okay and from 2 to 3 is a heat addition 3 to 4 is a work out producing work from turbine okay and lastly is the condenser okay so bear in mind this is a, 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 a x axis so this is entropy so point 3 and 4 uh, sorry uh, point 3 and 4 is a uh, vertical okay so basically the entropy for point three and point four is the same same with point uh, two and one okay so we have a isentropic so pump is a isentropic and turbine also isentropic okay so uh, in order to solve this the thermal efficiency okay so this is your uh, formula lah. so recall back so we have a work net divided by q in and work net is from your uh, turbine minus your pump so turbine okay or q in minus q out okay so you have two choices either you want to use a turbine or minus pump or uh, heat in minus heat out what whatever whatever the information uh, given and you can calculate it first lah okay all right so this is we call it as a skeleton diagram 
which means that you know what you want to do by drawing first the diagram and also identify the formula relevant in order to solve the problem so from this skeleton diagram and then you can go detail one by one okay in order to solve this equation sorry this problem okay bear in mind you need to find each point normally each point you must have two uh, data either uh, is a pressure or temperature because you can refer refer to the uh, steam tables okay either uh, is a pressure or entropy is okay or entropy with a uh, temperature okay or an enthalpy with a pressure either one but in each point each point here you must identify two pi po two parameters because that is the key point in order to refer to the steam tables okay so refer referring back from this uh, information given so we have a point 3 we have 3 megapascal and also uh, the temperature so from this we can identify uh, the uh, the at this point we can we can know uh, we can refer back to the uh, steam table we can find the entropy and also the enthalpy at point 3 okay so from point 1 normally for ideal Rankine cycle okay so take note take note uh, I'm stating here but I, I'm not uh, write it down but you must take note very very be careful okay if we if the question is ideal Rankine cycle the starting point normally the point one the inlet of pump is at the saturated liquid okay uh, I repeat for ideal Rankine cycle point one normally we, we assume at saturated liquid condition at point one here okay so that is valid only for ideal Rankine cycle normally if the question tells you to find the the, the, the efficiency or whatsoever for ideal Rankine cycle automatically point one is at saturated liquid at this point okay same with here at this point okay so uh, that is the uh, hint I'm giving to you to you all okay so at state one so pressure one okay and but uh, P4 is the same because we have a same pressure line okay at 75 kilopascal so it at uh, the, the position of point one is at saturated liquid so we have two parameters here saturated liquid and the pressure so refer back to tables steam table A5 so from that we can find the enthalpy the entropy and also the specific volume Okay, so this specific volume we will use for pump. Okay, so recall back your pump. Uh, the work is your uh, specific volume times your difference in pressure. Okay, so we have a state one two point. Okay, we have uh, taken out the enthalpy. We need the enthalpy in order to calculate the. Uh, work for pump okay point two point two also we need to determine the enthalpy h2 so enthalpy one h1 has been determined here so at point two uh, we have the uh, we need to determine what is the uh, enthalpy okay 
So information in the state 2 is that the pressure 2 is the same with pressure 3 and also the enthalpy 2 sorry the entropy at point 2 is same with entropy at point 1 okay so the same all right so from here from these two data okay we can, uh, here we cannot refer to steam tables because it in the uh, liquid condition okay so we need to use this formula okay so in order to determine the work in so we can use either this either one enthalpy uh, enthalpy 2 minus enthalpy 1 or uh, specific volume 1 p pressure point 2 minus pressure point 1 okay so we can determine what is the work for pump work in is a pump okay so from this work we can determine the enthalpy at point two okay so this is your point so we have two enthalpy so from this h1 and h2 we can know the uh, work out work in okay all right so from point two we proceed into point three so sorry point three is the at superheated condition Okay, because this is the inlet for turbine. Okay, so given directly from the question, we have 3 megapascal and also the temperature is 350 degree Celsius. And directly refer to the tables, steam tables. So we have uh, enthalpy at point 3 and entropy at point 3. Okay, so bear in mind for state 4, okay, so the entropy is the same. So S entropy 4 and entropy 3 is the same because it's a isentropic expansion. Okay. And uh, refer back to the to the diagram. So it in the mixture condition. So you must determine what is the fraction. Okay. So this fraction is used to determine the enthalpy. Okay, so from by using the entropy, we can determine what is the fraction. So this is the fra percentage fraction, and we can locate what is the entropy at point four. Okay, so from this uh, exercise, we have we have known the entropy point one, entropy point two, entropy point three, entropy point four. So from this enthalpy, we can calculate the uh, heat injection injected to the system, heat rejected to the from the system, and also the work net. And lastly, we can determine the efficiency. Okay, All right. So deviation of uh, actual vapor power cycle from idealized one. So meaning here we have a isentropic efficiencies okay so the actual vapor power cycle differ from the ideal Rankine cycle as a result of irreversibilities in the various component okay so basically with the fit friction and heat loss to the surrounding are the two common source of irreversibilities okay so basically we have the deviation so we have the actual for a is actual S is a isentropic. Okay, so uh, the isentropic efficiency normally is from the turbine and also the pump. Okay, so we have the isentropic efficiency for pump, isentropic efficiency for the turbine. Okay, simple problem 6.6. .6. So consider a steam power plant that operates on a simple Rankine cycle and has a net power output of 45 megawatt okay so basically here normally we consider the power output is in units of kilojoule per kg okay so here in this question uh, we know that the uh, power output is in terms of megawatt 
which is the kilojoule per second. Tim, enter the turbine at 7 megapascal and 500 degrees Celsius and is cool in the condenser at a pressure of 10 kilopascal by running cooling water from a leak through the tube of the condenser at a rate of 2000 kg per second with specific heat for cooling water is 4.184 kilojoule per kg dot degree celsius okay so specific heat is give, being given directly okay and from this question also uh, we know that the condenser is a heat exchanger we have two fluid inside the condenser first is cooling water and also the second is the steam from the uh, turbine okay so the asymptotic efficiency for both turbine and compressor are 87%. Show the cycle on the TS diagram with respect to saturation line and determine A. Thermal efficiency, thermal efficiency of the cycle B. The mass flow rate of the steam and lastly the temperature rise of the cooling water. Okay, So this is the diagram given directly inside the question okay so actual vapor water cycle based on the uh, idle Rankine cycle okay as being given that given uh, before this as is an idle Rankine cycle so we have point one is at a saturated liquid okay so given inside the uh, question okay so the firstly is to determine the efficiency efficiency is work net divided by q in work net is from your either q in, uh, heat in minus heat out or we have a uh, turbine minus the work pump work turbine minus work pump okay all right so from b the mass flow rate Okay, so mass for it here. Bear in mind, given in the question, the power plant produce 45 megawatt. So basically, the unit is in kilojoule per second. Watt, same with kilojoule per second. Okay, so uh, normally we consider the watt, watt, uh, the work, work produce, okay, is in kilojoule per kg. So if we divided kilojoule per second, Per kilojoule per kg, taken out the kilojoule, we have a kg per second. That is the mass flow rate. Okay. And lastly, the question is the temperature rise. So temperature rise. So we have the uh, heat from the condenser. So this is the cooling water. Okay, it's not a steam. This is the cool. Uh, before this, I have mentioned that. Uh, the condenser sorry the heat exchanger will operate uh, by using two different fluid okay so this is the uh, water and the other one will be the steam okay so uh, in order to determine the enthalpy for each point okay so point enthalpy one we have a pressure we have a uh, HF one because it's at, at the saturated liquid. Okay, so from this we can determine the specific uh, volume. Okay, and H, H uh, enthalpy at point two, the actual one we can determine from the uh, uh, enthalpy efficiency for pump. Okay, and by using this, uh, we can determine the uh, actual enthalpy at point two. Okay, so this is the skeleton diagram. In order to solve this question, okay. So uh, best practice before you answers any question, we you should uh, construct first the skeleton diagram. 
uh, because you need to plan what you want to find uh, at the end of the day you know uh, the end the formula related with your answers and you have prepared all the related formula before you answers okay as you have finished all the skeleton diagram then you can move in to solve this problem okay so uh, point three given directly the enthalpy sorry enthalpy at point three uh, given in uh, from the question the pressure has been given directly the temperature also given directly so two parameters uh, given here we can use these uh, parameters refer to the steam tables we can determine directly the enthalpy at point three so the enthalpy at point three also we can use uh, so point three also we can determine the uh, entropy at point three because entropy at point three is the same entropy at point four okay uh, so from that we can determine the uh, enthalpy uh, at point four the actual okay uh, so uh, by using this uh, isentropy efficiency for the turbine okay so this is the skeleton diagram then we solve so starting normally starting with state one at the pressure given directly and the condition is at saturated liquid so from this saturated liquid we can determine the enthalpy at point one and also the specific volume at point one okay and from state 2 the pressure line is 7 megapascal okay by using this equation work for pump okay so we can determine the h po enthalpy at point 2 isentropic efficiency sorry, sorry isentropic uh, enthalpy okay so this uh from 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 this we can determine the uh, isentropic work okay uh, because uh, uh, this is the isentropic work okay so from this efficiency this equation we can determine the actual uh, enthalpy okay so solving this equation we have a enthalpy a point to the actual one okay state 3 is det being determined directly from the because the point two point has been given inside the question okay so we have a temperature okay so is at a superheated vapor so we can determine the enthalpy at point three and also the entropy at point three so entropy at point three is same with entropy at point four as it is the uh, isentropic condition okay so at point four isentropic condition okay so and then from from this uh, ice entropy we can determine the fraction okay and from this fraction we can determine the uh, enthalpy at point four the isentropic uh, enthalpy isentropic enthalpy okay so this h4s and isentropic efficiency for by using the isentropy efficiency so we can know the uh, point enthalpy at point for the actual so this is the actual so as we have determined all the relevant uh, enthalpy uh, for each point we have four point so from this equation from this enthalpy we can substitute into the general equation to determine the uh, heat injected inside the boiler heat rejected from the condenser and we have can determine the work net and lastly the efficiency of the uh, cycle right okay uh, so the mass flow rate okay so as i have mentioned earlier so the unit work net is in watt what is kilojoule per second so here is a kilojoule per second work net okay is in kilojoule per kg kilojoule per kg work net kilojoule per kg okay so work net work dot net is in kilojoule per second 
so kilojoule we taken out the kilojoule kilojoule the left out will be the kg per second so that is the mass flow rate okay okay for point c also uh, uh, determine the okay temperature rise of the cooling tower okay so for point c uh, we need to determine first the uh, q is based our reference the heat being rejected heat being rejected from the condenser is being the heat being accepted inside the cooling water for the condenser okay uh, so it based on the uh, so q out q out for for the uh, uh, received by the uh, condenser okay so this is the condenser at water so this is the q rejected by the condenser so this is your cooling water and this is the condenser we have calculated before this okay sorry okay so from this we can know the temperature difference so the specific heat is being given directly okay and we can know the difference lah okay all right so how can we increase the efficiency of the rankine cycle so that is the interesting question okay so the basic idea behind all the modification to increase the thermal efficiency of a power cycle is the same which is to increase the average temperature at which heat is transferred to the working fluid in the boiler or decrease the average temperature at which heat is rejected from the working fluid in the condenser so which means that you need to lower the condenser pressure so this is the actual one okay so by reducing the length 0.1 0 0.2 and this is okay so this is uh, uh, reducing the pump load okay reducing the pump load uh, the turbine also also reduce but the, 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 the total work net will be higher because the pump uh, we use only small portion okay so the side effect so lowering the condenser pressure increase the moisture content of the steam at the final stage of the turbine so basically here normally at point this okay as we increase the work net work produce okay so basically the 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 the, the, the outlet of the turbine also uh, increase the moisture content that will damage the blade inside the turbine rotor okay or the other method is to superheat the steam to higher temperature okay both the network and the heat input increase as result of superheating the steam to a higher temperature the overall effect is an increase in thermal efficiency since the average temperature at which he added is increased okay so basically uh, increasing here so which means that the the higher the this length okay so the turbine will produce higher output but superheating to higher temperature decrease the moisture content of the steam at turbine exit which is desirable but the temperature is limited by metallurgical consideration okay so increasing the temperature inside the turbine blade also will damage the blade rotor because of metallurgical effect the material for that turbine blade itself okay because the presently the highest steam temperature allowed at the steam turbine inlet is about 620 degree celsius okay so another method is to increasing the boiler pressure okay so for a fixed turbine inlet temperature the cycle shift to the left to the left okay 
and the moisture content of steam at the turbine as it increase so this side effect can be corrected by reheating the steam okay so in order to increase okay uh, reduce the heat added okay uh, so this is the the effect of increasing the boiler pressure for the idle Rankine cycle okay so basically uh, this is the normal one so increasing the pressure boiler okay so uh, increasing the pressure boiler will reduce the amount of heat injected for the boiler okay so and that's why from this idea we have a modern uh, steam power plant that operate at super critical pressure what is meant by super critical is the operation is much higher from the critical point so which means that the operation is not involved inside the mixture so this is the the fluid is directly converted into the steam superheated steam it's not uh, go through the uh, the mixture condition okay and thermal efficiency of about 40 percent for fuel fossil fuel plant and 34 percent for nuclear plant so cycle improve improvement the first step is uh for for re for rankin cycle is the to reheat okay so how can we take advantage of the increased efficiency at higher boiler pressure without facing the problem of excessive moisture at the final stage of the turbine one is to push is to superheat the steam to very high temperature but it is limited methodologically and secondly to expand the steam in the turbine in two stage and reheat in it it in between so basically the reheated okay so at normal normally after the turbine so uh, directly goes to the condenser but here we have a reheater so process four to five is being the outlet from the higher pressure turbine is being reheated back at norm assuming the temperature at 0.5 is the same at temperature at 0.3 okay and then goes back into the lower pressure turbine okay that producing a double output so here we have a double output so 0.3 to 4 is one output 4 to sorry 5 to 6 is also another output so increasing the work output for turbine okay so ideal reheat rankin cycle the single reheat in a modern power plant improves the cycle efficiency by four to five percent by increasing the average temperature so the average temperature during the reheat process can be increased by increasing the number of expansion and reheat stage as the number of stage sorry the as the number of stage is increased the expansion and reheat process approach an isothermal process at the maximum temperature so the use of more than two reheat stage is not practical okay the theoretically improvement in efficiency from the second reheat is about half of that which result in from a single reheat okay so basically the practicality uh, maybe back maybe in in terms of a uh, 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 theory okay reheat more uh, can increase the efficiency for rankin cycle but on the other hand it will burden the boiler itself okay so which mean that if you uh, want to reheat more and more and more so the loading inside the boiler is will be increasing the boiler also have the limited output okay so the reheat temperature at very close or equal to the turbine inlet temperature so the optimum reheat pressure is about one fourth of the maximum cycle pressure okay 
Sample problem 6.7. So consider a steam power plant operating on the idle reheat Rankine cycle. So here is a idle reheat. The idle reheat Rankine cycle. So bear in mind the point one will be at the saturated liquid. Okay. So steam enter the high pressure turbine at 15 megapascal and 600 degree C and is condensed in the condenser at a pressure of 10 kilopascal. If the moisture content of the steam at the exit of low pressure turbine is not to be exceed 10.4%, determine A, the pressure at which the steam should be reheat, reheated and B, the thermal efficiency of the cycle. So, assume the steam is reheated to the inlet temperature of the high pressure turbine so this assumption means that the temperature at point 5 is the same at point 3 so that is the assumption okay so we need to draw the skeleton diagram skeleton formula so this is the skeleton plan okay so at point A is to pressure the steam should be reheated so we have three pressure line so this is the one pressure line four five is another pressure line and lastly one six is another pressure line so here we have three pressure line so the question at point a is to determine the third pressure line point four to five okay all right so at point 5, we have a temperature at 600 degrees Celsius because the point 3 and temperature at point 3 and point 5 is similar. And another thing is that the entropy, entropy at point 5 is the same at point 6. Okay. So the temperature, eh, sorry, the, the B is to determine the efficiency of the cycle so this is the normal formula as we discussed before lah. okay so how to find the enthalpy at point at each point so the enthalpy point one is based on the pressure point one is being given directly in the question so we have 10 kPa okay and is a ideal Rankine cycle we assume at a saturated liquid point okay so from this we can uh, we can look into the steam table so we can de directly determine the enthalpy at point one and also the entropy at point one okay and also the specific volume at point one so point two based on the pump okay so same as example before so we can determine the enthalpy point two okay so at point 3 is based on the pressure at point 3 and also the temperature at point 3. So given directly inside the question, the pressure at point 3 is 15 and the temperature is 600 degrees C. Okay, so we can determine directly the point three, uh, enthalpy at point 3 and also the entropy at point 3. At point 4, the entropy, the entropy at point 4 is similar at point 3 and the pressure at point 4 is same with pressure 5 so it's not been given and we need to uh, find okay so at point 5 as being discussed before the temperature <coughs> point 0.5 is same with temperature at point 3 and the entropy point 0.5 is similar with entropy at point 6 the lastly at point six we have the pressure at point six okay pressure at point six and we have a fraction because the outlet of the turbine is on the uh, mixture condition so we need to determine the fraction so from this fraction we can determine the enthalpy at point six okay so this fraction is being determined by using the entropy for Point six. Okay, so this is the skeleton diagram for the entire solution. Okay, and then we solve. Okay, at point five, starting. Okay, we have the uh, temperature. 
and also we have the entropy and from this we cannot we cannot do we, we cannot solve because we don't know what is the entropy at 0.5 and 0.6 okay so the 0.6 we can we can determine the entropy by using the state 6 because we have a temperature and the fraction fraction has been given directly okay so from this 10.4 we can determine the fraction is 0 0.896 okay so from this fraction we can determine the entropy okay the entropy and also the enthalpy okay sorry uh, so from this entropy we can determine the enthalpy uh, sorry entropy at 0.5 so we have the temperature so from this we can know from these two parameters we can read on the tables okay so uh, from this table we know that the from from uh, entropy zero uh, sorry 7.3706 kilojoule per kg dot kelvin uh, at 600 degrees celsius is near to the pressure of 4 megapascal in order to determine the exact location for pressure one we need to uh, we need to what we call it as a uh, interpolate okay so okay so from that point six uh, sorry point uh, points point five and point six we can determine from state one okay state one is directly given okay so we can know the enthalpy at point one and also specific volume at point one so from from enthalpy one and specific volume we can determine the work pump okay and from this work pump we can determine the enthalpy at point two sorry okay so then we proceed to uh, state three the point three and temperature at point three is being given directly from the question so we can refer to tables in tables so the enthalpy at point three and entropy at point three is being directly given from the tables okay all right so point four point four uh, the entropy at point four is this is the same with entropy at point three because there is a isentropic expansion of a turbine okay so the pressure line we have determined before this 0.4 is 4 megapascal and then interpolate so we can determine the entropy at 0.4 okay all right so as we have known the enthalpy of each point so we can calculate the heat injected so heat injected bear in mind we have two types we have two heat being injected so this is a portion heat being injected and also 0 0.4 and 5 so the total heat injected we have two parts here 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 okay so uh, 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 okay so this is your heat injected total heat injected Q out is based on the condenser so the work net and lastly the efficiency of the cycle okay all right so the ideal regenerative Rankine cycle so heat is transferred to the working fluid during process two and two here okay two prime at a relatively low temperature so this lower temperature this lower the average heat addition temperature and thus the cycle efficiency because heat needed more heat needed point from point two to point three okay in order to increase the temperature if the temperature is at point two prime so much less heat needed to increase the temperature so that's why in steam power plant steam is extracted from the turbine at various points so this steam which could have produced more work by expanding further in the turbine 
is used to heat the feed water. Okay. The device where the feed water is heated by regeneration is called the regenerator or feed water heater. And normally, uh, in the reality world, in the in the reality, okay, the reheated is uh, occurs in a uh, what we call it as a I forgot uh, the aerator, okay. Uh, so the the no no uh, in 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 reality the regenerator is called the aerator heat being introduced okay so a feed water heater is basically a heat exchanger where heat is transferred from the steam to the feed water either by mixing the two feed steam we call it as an open feed water heater or without mixing them we call it as a closed feed water heater Okay, so open feed water heater. Okay, so an open or direct contact feed water heater is basically a mixing chamber where the steam extracted from the turbine mix with the feed water existing the pump. Okay, ideally the mixture leave the heater as a saturated liquid at the heater pressure. Okay. So basically, from this turbine, we tap some amount, okay, in order to preheat the feed water, okay. So uh, the, the 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 temperature uh, after the uh, feed water is higher compared to uh, the pump one, okay. So here we have the fraction y. Y is normally we assume as a constant to replace the unknown of mass flow rate. Okay, as too many mass flow rate, so we use only as we sorry sorry, we have two unknowns mass flow rate six and mass flow rate one. So in order to reduce the unknown uh, from two unknowns to one unknown, so we use the Y. So why the purpose of why is to reduce the unknown from two unknown only to only for only to one unknown only, okay? Alright. So sample problem six point eight. Consider a steam power plant operating on the ideal regenerative Rankine cycle with one open feed water heater as shown in figure below so steam enter the turbine at 15 megapascal and 600 degrees celsius and is condensed in the condenser at a pressure of 10 kilopascal some steam leave the turbine at a pressure of 1.2 megapascal and enter the open feed water heater determine a the fraction of steam extracted from the turbine and b the thermal efficiency of the cycle so this fraction is determined the y okay so this is the ideal regenerative cycle ideal regenerative cycle so which means that the point point one is at uh, saturated liquid and point d also the pump is at ideal because the ideal at saturated liquid okay so bear in mind if this is the ideal so the inlet pump is at the saturated liquid okay right so uh, this is the skeleton diagram okay so uh, the the point a is to determine the fraction the y the fraction of the steam turbine Okay, so base bear in mind. So we have uh, for feed water heater, we have two opening, two inlet, okay, and one outlet. So we assume at point three here, the outlet will be one mass flow rate. So the uh, inlet will be y, and this portion is one minus y. One is the full hundred percent. Okay, y is the unknown. So from this equation. So we can left out the mass flow rate. So at the end of the day, we have only the enthalpy and 
the y okay the job uh, so uh, the task we need to do is determine the enthalpy for each point okay so rearrange this equation we have the uh, y fraction is based on the enthalpy only okay all right so then from that skeleton diagram we can solve point by point so given directly the step one pressure is being given directly so and also we know that the uh, the location of point one is at saturated, saturated liquid so from these uh, two parameters given directly we can determine the, the enthalpy at point one and also the specific volume at point one okay at point two state two the pressure is at 1.2 megapascal okay so from that you can determine the work for pump one work in one is a work pump so this is the work pump and from this work pump we can determine the enthalpy at point two okay all right at point three Okay, so point three, we have the uh, sorry. Point three, okay. Point three, we have the one point two megapascal, and also is ideal locator also at saturated liquid. So from these two parameters, we can refer back to the. Uh, tem uh, steam tables we can determine the enthalpy at point three and also point uh, and also the uh, specific volume at point three okay at point four okay so point four given directly the pressure is 15 megapascal okay so uh, at point four point four is the outlet from the pump to Okay, so the pressure line also we have uh, is being given directly. Okay, so the, we can determine the uh, work pump two and also the enthalpy at point four. Okay, and at point five, point five is the inlet for turbine. So given directly from the question is the pressure in fifteen megapascal and also the temperature at 0.5 600 degrees C so from these two parameters we can refer to the uh, steam tables so we have we can know the enthalpy at 0.5 and entropy at 0.5 so entropy at 0.5 is similar because this is the straight line isentropic condition isentropic for turbine so Entropy 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and 0 0.7 is the same. Okay. Uh, okay. So 0 0.6 entropy 0 0.6 and 0 0.5 is the same. So the pressure line 0 0.6 is 1.2 megapascal. So from these two parameters, we can interpolate. So we can determine the 0 0.6. Uh, sorry, enthalpy at 0 0.6. Okay. So at 0 0.7, similar step because the entropy is similar but differ in the pressure line so uh, the point 0.7 is at the mixture condition so we can determine the fraction first and then we can determine the enthalpy at point 0.7 okay so we have determined all the enthalpy for each point and then substitute into the uh, y so we can determine the fraction okay all right and for the uh, efficiency for the entire cycle is from work net divided by q in work net is q in minus q out q in minus q out so this is your efficiency okay all right <coughs> close fit water heater so another type of water heater frequently used in steam power plant is the closed fit water heater. Before this, we have discussed on the open fit water heater. So 
the difference between the closed with water heater and open with water heater the closed with water heater the water is not mixed so we have a different channel and the closed with water heater is acting like the heat exchanger okay so in which heat is transferred from the extracted steam to the filled water without any mixing taking place so the two stream now can be at different pressure since they do not mix okay so this is the point okay for mixing chamber all right so the closed fit water heater are more complex because of the internal tubing network and thus they are more expensive so the heat transfer in closed fit water heater is less effective since the two steam are not allowed to be in a direct contact because it not mixed however closed fit water heater do not require a separate pump for each heater since the extracted steam and the fit water can be at a different pressure okay so we have a multiple closed fit water heater okay all right thank you